Hello friends, NMIMS welcomes you to your rendezvous with the knowledge stream of Export-Import Procedures and Documentation. This presentation consists of the 10th lesson named Processing of an Export Order. An export exercise is concluded successfully after the exporter has been able to deliver the consignment in accordance with the export contract and receive payment for the goods. In this lesson, we will also learn various formalities of claiming export incentive. After studying this lesson, you should be able to understand examination of export order, central excise clearance, pre-shipment inspections, claiming export incentives. As soon as an export order has been received, the exporter must first acknowledge its receipt by intimating the importer through telephone, telex, fax, etc. Though not legally necessarily, this step is helpful in creating business goodwill for the exporter. The exporter must carefully examine the contents of the order to see that there is no discrepancy between the export order and the export contract, verbal or written. Thus the accepted performer invoice, buyer's purchase order or the letter of credit opened in favor of the exporter must be examined. A new exporter who is very keen to get into business may tend to ignore certain aspects of the export order. It is not uncommon that Lai encounters difficulties while complying with the contracted obligations. In the process, he may suffer a loss. For example, the importer may specify inspection to be undertaken by an agency which does not operate from India. Such a problem will be discovered only after the goods have been manufactured. At this stage, it may be difficult to persuade the importer to change this condition. Consequently, the exporter may suffer a loss. The Central Excise and Salt Act of India and the related rules provide the refund of excise duty paid. This also provides exemption from the payment of excise duty both on the final export production and input used in the manufacture of export products popularly known as rebate in excise duty. As soon as goods are ready for dispatch to the port for shipment, the production department of export firm is to apply to the Central Excise Authority for excise clearance of the goods. Sometimes the exporter desires sealing of the goods by the Central Excise Officer so that the custom officers at the port of shipment may not examine the export goods. On receipt of the documents sent by the export department, the clearing and forwarding agent takes delivery of the cargo from the railway station or the road transport company and arranges its storage in the warehouse. He also initiates action to obtain customs clearance and permission from the port authorities to bring cargo into the shipment shed. The objectives of customs control are to ensure that the goods go out of the country after compliance with different laws concerning export trade to ensure authenticity of value of export goods to check over or under invoicing, to correctly assess and collect export duty if applicable, to compile data on cargo movements. For complying with these objectives, the customs grant permission for export at two stages. Firstly, documentary checks are made at the office of the customs. Secondly, Physical examination of goods is made in the shipment shed to verify that the goods being exported are the same as have been declared on the document submitted at the customs house. The document in which customs give clearance for export is the shipping bill. After obtaining the bill of lading from the shipping company, the documents that the agent sends to the exporter are 
one copy of the commercial invoice duly attested by the customs. Export promotion copy of the shipping bill. Drawback copy of the shipping bill. Full set of clean onboard bill of lading together with non-negotiable copies. Original letter of credit or contract order. Copies of customs invoice. AR4 or AR5 duplicate and invoice. GR form. Duplicate. You have learned the processing of an export order at pre-shipment, shipment and post-shipment level. Let us now discuss the processing of claiming export incentives. After completing the post-shipment formalities, the clearing and forwarding agent will file the following documents with the Maritime Central Excise Collector or Jurisdictional Assistant Collector of Central Excise for claiming the refund of excise duty for obtaining release from bond. For claiming duty drawback, the exporter's agent will file the customs attested copy of the drawback shipping bill along with the certain specified documents with the drawback department of the customs house. After finding the claim to be correct, the drawback department will dispatch the check of the claim amount to the exporter. Alternatively, if the exporter so desires, this amount will be sent to the exporter's bank for being credited to his account with intimation to the exporter. Now let us check our progress. Export order is a documentary evidence of the export contract, which is generally in the form of program invoice purchase order or letter of credit. Right or wrong? Right. Packing credit is a post-shipment credit facility. Right or wrong? Wrong. Central excise clearance includes clearance of goods from the factory warehouse by the Central Excise Authority to enable the exporting units to claim rebate in excise duty. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Processing of an export order starts with the receipt of an export order generally in the form of either the proforma invoice, purchase order or letter of credit. On its receipt, the exporter must First acknowledge its receipt and then process to examine it. The examination should be done with reference to terms and conditions of the contract, particularly product specification terms of shipment and payment and submission of documents to the bank. If any discrepancy is found, the importer must be immediately informed for amendment of the order. The exporter should then confirm the order with the importer. For production or procurement and transportation of goods to the port for shipment, a number of activities are to be undertaken by the production or procurement department of the export firm. The first activity is to apply for pre-shipment credit, packing credit to the bank. The bank takes into account a number of factors and grants credit to the extent determined by the value of the confirmed export order. The credit amount is used for manufacturing or procuring and packing goods. The clearance from the central excise authorities is needed so that the exporter can get rebate in the central excise duty paid or payable on the exported goods. Thank you.